creating data that appeals to your viewers and tells a story is not always an easy task. Look at these charts, for example. They're okay, but look at this chart now. It's so much better, isn't it? Hey, my name is Mo Chen, and part of my job as a data and analytics analyst revolves around helping my audience understand the meaning of data by filtering out the noise so that I can create actionable insights that people can quickly and easily interpret. We consume so much data nowadays, and the ability to tell effective stories using data is a valuable skill set, which is why in today's video, I'll walk you through my top eight data storytelling tips that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Tip number one would be to focus on the most important information only. Ideally, you'd have one key point per visual, whether it's a table, chart, or a graph. Our brains naturally look for patterns and are great at identifying anything that stands out. You wanna make sure you utilize this bit of human behavior to guide your viewer's attention to the one thing that you wanna get across using your visual, which in this case would be the fact that having an ice cream shop is clearly a seasonal business with the summer months producing the best sales figures. Say for example, look at this combo chart, which has three elements, a column chart combined with two lines. Straight away, it's much harder to instantly understand and interpret the visual. Of course, there are times when you're creating visuals that will be circulated to a wider audience. And in these instances, it's okay to include more complicated combo charts with the necessary context and messaging around it. But if you're presenting this data, you could just introduce your visual in stages and let your audience interpret the chart step by step. Sales column chart first, then the profit line, and then the average order size. Speaking of presenting, I'm sure lots of you had struggles transitioning to the new era of digital meetings with some people in the office and others working from home. This is where a tool like Miro, an online whiteboarding platform that can help you to organize and run effective and engaging meetings or workshops. Say for example, I have a meeting to discuss dashboard specifications and layouts. With Miro, I can quickly create a new board and add an agenda with goals for my session. I can get started fast by using one of the many templates available. I can create a structure and lock any content I don't want others to play around with. Then I just need to send out the invites. Once the meeting starts, I'll go over the basic tools. I can create a timer, which helps me keep track of time to ensure I cover all agenda items. I can just as easily ask my audience to vote on which visuals they prefer for instant feedback. So if you're interested, sign up to Miro, the sponsor of this video, for free using the link in the description below. Tip number two would be to use your titles to reflect your story or call to action. This chart compares how much two teams, Team Sam and Team Alex, enjoyed the training session. Just by reading the title, your audience already knows exactly what to look for in the visual, which is the fact that Team Sam enjoyed the training session more than Team Alex. Or here's another chart with a call to action clearly indicated in the title. The title also provides an explanation around why we should hire five FTEs to backfill the position, clearly supported by the visual, as we can see a gap opening up between orders received and orders fulfilled after the resignations. Moving on to tip number three, which is my 15 second rule. A team of neuroscientists from MIT found that the human brain can process entire images that the eye sees in as little as 13 milliseconds. So if it takes someone more than 15 seconds to understand my visual, then I probably need to rethink the way I present it to my viewers. Of course, there are cases when this won't apply, like when you have a whole dashboard to present, but if it's just a simple visual, it's something you should definitely try and stick to. I mean, if you think about it, 15 seconds is plenty of time. It's enough time to tie a tie, 
solve a Rubik's Cube, pour a drink, why wouldn't it be enough time to understand and interpret a visual? Tip number four would be to use colors for contrast. Our brains are better at identifying colors rather than shapes, so try and use this human trait to your advantage. Let's look at this earlier example with the sales figures without using a different color for contrast. Not so eye-catching, right? Changing the color of the highest sales immediately draws your attention to the summer months. Much better, isn't it? Or let's look at these exam results. I can see that Jessica, Tom, and Alex scored higher than the average. But once I use a darker color for contrast, it instantly pops out that they're the ones who did better than the average. Tip number five would be to stay consistent with your formatting and styling throughout your presentation. Say I have this table where I highlighted the totals with a light purple background and ordered the coffee type sales total figures in descending order with countries represented in the Ireland, UK, USA order. I also highlighted the country with the highest sales for each coffee type in blue. Now I have this other table showing the coffee type orders by country as opposed to sales. The totals are still shaded in light purple, but the coffee types are no longer ordered in descending order based on the total order amount. The countries also appear in a different order compared to the previous table. Moreover, I also changed my other highlight color from blue to orange, not to mention that this time I'm actually highlighting the highest coffee type order within each country, leaving me with three highlighted values only. And just to reiterate, we like looking for patterns, we like consistency, so make sure you keep the same formatting and styling throughout your presentation. Tip number six may sound like a no-brainer, but please try not to go against well-accepted conventions. Just think of how we associate blue with cold water and red with hot water. It's absolutely fine to be creative and think outside the box when it comes to visualizations, but there are certain things like green is good, amber is not so good, and red is bad, for example. If you ignore these cultural conventions, your visuals can become significantly harder to interpret as your audience needs to actively go against their beliefs, disagree with them, so that they can move on and agree with whatever your new convention is. Tip number seven would be to leverage the power of comparing one thing to another. Try not to present a single figure or metric. Look at this chart, for example. The profit is almost $74,000. Is this good? Is this bad? Is this average? We don't know. We can quickly add some context by using historical data. We can compare to last year, for example, or the years before. Historical data is probably the easiest to compare against, but in case you don't have any, you can always use industry benchmarks. When comparing, make sure you compare like for like. Say in this case, compare yearly data to yearly data and not to quarterly data or any other time frame. You can also use line charts to compare different scenarios, which is really useful when it comes to business proposals. Comparison charts give your audience context, making it easier for them to understand and interpret your message. And last but not least, keep it simple. Make every item you use in your visuals count. If you add a specific color, make sure there's a reason behind it. Don't just color things for the sake of it. If you add an extra call out sticker, make sure it's highly visible and contains key information. Fancy charts might look great, but in reality, you can pretty much tell any story using bar, column, and line charts only. I've been a big fan of the visualizations produced by The Economist for many years now. They use bar, line, and area charts heavily and are able to effectively tell any story using these. I highly recommend you check out their visual style guide if you haven't done so yet. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, 
you should also check out some of my other videos right here. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.